Now, we will move towards proving spectral theorem using the Gelfand uh, Neumark theorem and Gelfand theory which we developed in the last uh, several lectures. Okay. So, A is contained in B of H. So, B of H is uh, so this will be the notation always H is a Hilbert space Hilbert space infinite dimensional Hilbert space and B of H is bounded operators on H. Okay. So, bounded bounded operators on H always. Okay. So, this is going to be our notation all the time. Uh, a is a commutative. So, A is B of H is a uh, Cicer algebra with the identity, but it is non commutative. right? We take A to be a commutative Cicer algebra with identity. So, remember the remarks I made in the last lecture that if you have a normal operator, the Cicer algebra generated by that will is going to be a commutative Cicer algebra. right? So, Suppose A is a commutative, is a is a commutative sister algebra, okay, with identity. So identity in the in the in B of H is just the identity operator, right? Okay. Now for T in A, so remember the uh, Gelfand Neumark. So A is identified with continuous functions on sigma of a right that is the gelfand transform which is uh, 1 1 on 2 star isometric isomorphism so for any operator t in a there exists t hat right so t hat is the gelfand transform is the gelfand transform of a uh, sorry gelfand transform of t and t hat would be a continuous function on uh, the spectrum of a right so spectrum of a will denote it by sigma so let us change the notation um, sigma where so i'll keep using sigma equal to spectrum of a instead of keep on writing spectrum of a it is uh, sigma okay <coughs> So, which is a compact house of space, right? Okay. So, by the uh, we have the isomorphism here, and it goes the other way also, right? So, if if I take a continuous function in on sigma, com a complex valued continuous function on sigma, so that is that is here, then there is something here which is the inverse of that Gelfand transform, right? So, there exists T sub f in A. So, that is going to be the notation. I take any continuous function on uh, sigma which is the uh, compact Hausdorff space we have. Then there is an operator in A whose Gelfand transform is that continuous function right because I have a 1 1 on 2 uh, algebra homomorphism right so, uh, which is actually an isomorphism right it, it, it identifies the norm as well right. So, Gelfand uh, transform identifies these two completely right. So, any continuous function I have an operator T sub f such that it is Gelfand transform that is T sub f hat which is going to be a function on sigma capital sigma and that will have to be equal to f right. And not just that it identifies the norms right. So, the operator T sub f and if I look at the operator norm so, sometimes I may not write that O p there, uh, it will be clear that it is the operator norm. This is the norm of the function on the other side and that is the supremum norm. right? So, this is what uh, Gelfand theory does, right? this collection of operators are identified with collection of continuous functions on this compact Hausdorff space along with the norm. Right? Okay. Now, as I said this, this while it gives me operators looking at the function and so on, uh, I need to extend it to bounded functions. Okay. So, let us do that. So, this is purely measure theoretic arguments. So, now for u v in the Hilbert space, okay, so the notation is going to be slightly cumbersome now, one has to be careful. So, u v are vectors in the Hilbert space, consider the map. consider the map 
f going to ok. So, maybe take some space here to f going to. So, if I take an f where f in c sigma. So, it is a it is a continuous function on the uh, maximal ideal space of A right. So, f going to I have T sub f remember T sub f. So, this is the inverse of the Gelfand transform right. So, any f comes from a operator right T sub f T sub f is an operator. So, you act it on u that is a vector take the inner product with right. So, f is in C sigma and this is in the complex plane right. So, I have a function from uh, continuous functions on this compact Hausdorff space to the complex plane right which is clearly linear because T f going to T sub f is linear right. So, which is linear which is linear in f right because T because T alpha f plus g equal to alpha t sub f uh, plus t g right because it is the inverse Gelfand transform and Gelfand transform is uh, linear and as an algebra homomorphism and so on right. So, inverse also is the same. So, it is a linear map from continuous functions on a compact Hausdorff space to the complex plane. So, let us see if it is continuous ok. So, continuous with respect to the norm on c of sigma right. So, modulus of t f u v ok the inner product which is this is less than or equal to norm t f into norm u into norm v right that is trivial ok. But this we know I know that this is equal to the norm of f which is the supremum norm of f times norm u norm v ok. What does that mean? So, if I fix u and v what I have is a map f going to something in the complex plane and that something has this property that it is bounded by L infinity norm of. So, that is the supremum norm of f times some constant the constant is norm u norm v ok. So, that means it is a continuous linear functional right. So, hence f going to T sub f acting on u inner product with v is a continuous linear functional is a continuous linear functional right on c sigma right. But we know what the dual of c sigma is right. So, the dual of c sigma by race representation theorem is the uh, collection of complex Borel measures on sigma right. So, by by Reese representation theorem ok. There exists a unique regular complex measure. Now, that measure is going to depend on u and v right. We fixed u and v and looked at this linear function right. So, we will call the measure mu but with subscripts u and v ok. So, this is why I said the notation is going to be a bit cumbersome uh, mu u v right for vectors u and v we have this measure and well the linear functional is going to be given by this measure such that. So, we have the linear functional which is t inner product with is equal to sigma f the measure ok and this is true for every f in c sigma right continuous functions on sigma. And what is the norm of this linear functional that is the norm of the measure right that is the total variation measure. So, this is norm of p of course, this will be less than or equal to because we have this inequality this part will bound the norm right. So, norm of mu u v is less than to norm u into norm v ok. So, starting from the continuous <coughs> continuous case that is functions in uh, c sigma we have been able to produce a measure. Now, the measure will allow us to extend this property to all bounded functions ok. So, let us do that. Okay. 
So, well maybe some property of these measures. So, we have only constructed the measure right, but there are some obvious properties of the measure you can uh, deduce from this equality right, because left hand side is linear in u and v uh, well in v it is anti linear. Similarly, uh, mu will uh, have the same properties right. So, proposition u comma v going to mu sub u v ok. So, that is a measure valued uh, function or a map from h cross h. So, this is a sesquilinear. So, sesquilinear meaning uh, it is linear in, in the first variable u, it is antilinear in the second variable uh, v. So, if I multiply v with a uh, scalar the complex conjugation comes out. So, it is like inner product right except that this is taking values in the measure it is not taking values in the complex plane. If something like that takes values in the complex plane you say it is uh, it is like a inner product right or pre inner product or whatever. So, this is a sesquilinear map from h cross h right. So, u and v right. So, h cross h to m sigma what is m sigma? where so these are measures right where m sigma uh, is the collection of uh, regular complex borel meshes okay so borel measures on sigma okay so well the sesquilinear property is sort of straightforward uh, okay also some other properties which you can read off from the equality there is that mu u v. So, again think of this as some, some sort of inner product, but it is taking values in the measures right not in the complex plane. So, if I change the in the inner product if I change the order of the vectors I will get a complex conjugation right. So, mu u v is equal to mu v u uh, bar ok and mu u u. So, if it is the same vector then inner product should be positive. So, here is, is a positive measure ok positive measure <coughs> ok. So, let us prove this. So, proof of this is uh, easy except that you have to keep track of uh, various things <coughs> ok. So, proof. So, linearity in so let us uh, let me write down this expression again. So, this is what you should always keep in mind T u T f acting on u inner product with v is given by integral over sigma f the measure mu u, u right. So, linearity in u and anti linearity in v is trivial right. If I change u to u 1 plus u 2 the it splits on the left hand side and similarly it has to split on the right hand side right because of the uniqueness of the measure. So, uh, linear so that I will leave it to you. So, linearity linearity in u and anti linearity in v. So, by anti linearity I mean v 1 plus v 2 will of course, give me sum of things, but if I put an alpha I will get an alpha bar outside right. So, if you five if you want you can write down mu of uh, u 1 plus u 2 v equal to mu u 1 v plus mu u 2 v etcetera ok. I am not going to write down everything else. Think of inner products and mu u v as the inner product of u and v except that mu u v is a measure not a complex number all the properties are same ok. All that follows from uh, the properties of the integral and the fact that the measures are fi uh, unique right. So, sesquilinear part is trivial ok. Uh, since the Gelfand transform uh, respects star operation, so that means it is a star homomorphism ok. Uh, we get well we get T f star. So, remember f is a continuous function 
the operator T sub f is that operator whose Gelfand transform is f right. So, if I take the adjoint of T sub f uh, this operator on the other side that means after taking Gelfand transform I should get the adjoint of f, but the adjoint of f is just f bar right. So, this would be T f bar right. This is because T star hat equal to T hat bar. So, for every f in C sigma. So, now I am trying to prove the properties of these measures mu, uh, u and v right. So, for every f in C sigma integral over sigma f d mu u v ok equal to T f u v ok equal to u T f star v. So, all I have done is taking T f to the other side I will get a T f star which is because I know that joint of T f is T f bar. So, u T f bar v ok which is equal to well. So, bring in the T f bar v u by taking a complex conjugate this is equal to. So, if you forget the complex conjugate there this is T of some function v u. Right. So, by definition it is integral of f bar right that function d mu now our order is reverse right. So, I have v and u ok and there is a complex conjugation at the top. So, take the complex conjugation inside the integral. So, remember the integral is over sigma f bar f will give me f and I have the complex conjugation of the measure right. So, this is v and u ok. <laughs> So, now if you look at uh, these two equalities, so we started from here and we ended up here, I have the same f right. So, this is true for every f. So, the measures will have to be same right. So, in the measures if you look at the uh, vectors all you have done is changing the order of the coordinates u and v became v and u right. Hence, d. So, well let me not write d just write the measure mu u v equal to mu v u bar right. So, if you change the order of the vectors you will pick up a, a complex conjugation just like the inner product ok. Uh, so, this proves uh, so let us see the proposition. So, this proves uh, one assertion we want to prove that mu 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 u u is a positive measure right. So, let us prove that to show that. So, next to show that mu u u is a positive measure is a positive measure ok. So, how do you show that some measure is positive? Well, you integrate against a positive function and see that if it is positive or not right. If you integrate it against all positive functions and you get positive numbers then the measure has to be positive ok. So, that is what we will do. Okay. So, again this is um, you use the Gelfand transform. Um, so, finally, so if, if u is in h and f is positive f is a continuous function on sigma. So, take a positive function uh, in the in sigma on defined on sigma I want to integrate f against this measure mu u u and see that it is positive right. So, for that uh, if f is a positive continuous function I can take its uh, square root right positive square root. So, uh, let g a continuous function right g positive such that g square equal to f right. So, that is the square root of positive square root of f right that is going to be a continuous function on sigma and I have this. Now, remember g is positive. So, g star is g right g bar is g. So, the corresponding operator t sub g will have the same property right it is going to be a positive operator or it is a self adjoint operator right. Uh, then, then T g star T g ok. So, T g star is going to be T g itself because g g bar T g star is T g bar 
g bar is g because g is positive. So, this is simply T g square ok, but Gelfand transform is a uh, algebra homomorphism right. So, T g square is T g into T g. So, T g into T g should be the operator corresponding to g square right g into g. So, that is T g square ok equal to, but g square is f. So, T f ok. So, if f is positive what we are saying is the corresponding operator T sub f is positive right. So, so integral of our of f d mu u u over sigma this is equal to T sub f f u u equal to well I can write T sub f as T g star T g right. So, here so that is T g star T g uh, u u, but then this is norm T g u square ok and that is positive. So, for so this is true for every f positive right. So, for every f n c sigma f positive we have integral over sigma f d mu u u to be positive. So, this implies mu u u is a so the u has to be the same right. So, in both both quad, uh, both places it is u that is why you have the norm t g u square right. So, uh, mu u u is positive measure ok. So, we have proved uh, some basic properties of this uh, measures. So, let us before we go further let us look at some example where this is sort of easily demonstrated so that you see what is happening ok. So, example example look at C 0 1 ok with respect to the supremum norm and that is obviously a uh, commutative C star algebra with identity right after all it is uh, continuous functions on a compact Hausdorff well space right. So, any commutative C star algebra is of this form ok. Uh, let h be equal to L 2 of 0 1 right with respect to the uh, Lebesgue mesh. So, forget about the Gelfand transform and so on I just want to show you how some of these things uh, look here it is actually the Gelfand transform, but we will not bother about it right now ok look at f going to T sub f ok. f going to T sub f well T sub f is going to be a bounded operator from L 2 to L 2 ok. How is it? It is multiplication by f ok. So, T sub f acting on u equal to f times u where is u? u is in L 2 of 0 ok. So, if I multiply by f on L 2 of 0 1 then the norm of T sub f is so this operator norm of T sub f is same as the norm of f right. So, we know this if I multiply by some function the operator norm of that multiplication operator is equal to the norm of that function you are multiplying with right as long as you are on a sigma finite measure space and things like that. And this map is something which respects so if I look at this as multiplication operator it is an isometric isomorphism right. So, it is linear because if I look at f plus g it is multiplication by f plus g which is multiplication by f plus multiplication by g and the adjoint of this. So, adjoint of a multiplication operator you multiply by the complex conjugate of whatever you are multiplying with right. So, T f star will be multiplication by f star f bar and f g will go to multiplication by f and multiplication by g which is t f t g and so on right. So, it is a star isometric isomorphism right just like what happened in the case of uh, sister algebra. So, uh, the way to look at is you look at all this t sub f. So, that is a class of operators on L 2 of 0 1 that is a commutative sister algebra with identity and f going to t sub f is the inverse of the Gelfand transform ok. And if you if you do the construction like what we did earlier. So, you look at T f u u right or u v ok. So, for for u and v in your Hilbert space that is L 2 of 0 1 you look at T sub f inner product with uh, T sub f acting on u inner product with v right. So, take two L 2 functions. This our definition was integral. So, 
over sigma here we are 0 1. So, let us not bother about that I have f and uh, so f multiplied with u and v bar right f times u is my T f acting on u inner product with v right where is the inner product inner product in h right inner product in h is the L 2 inner product and d x right. So, this is the Lebesgue measure. Lebesgue measure right. So, f of x u x v x bar d x right and so your measure. So, remember this by Reese representation theorem what we proved was this is equal to integral f d u d mu u v right. So, the measure mu u v is simply this right. So, the measure mu or d u v equal to u times v bar. So, that is a function that is an L 1 function right? because u is in L 2 v is in L 2 product is in L 1 times d x the Lebesgue measure right. Now, you see all the sesquilinearity in u it is linear in v it is anti linear when if it is u u equal to v then of course, it is positive right. So, mu u u is mod u square uh, d x right the Lebesgue measure there times mod u square which is a positive function. So, it is a positive u right and the total variation you can see is bounded by the L infinity norm of u times L infinity norm of v and things like that ok. So, this is a very simple example to see what is happening. Uh, now, what we will do is so we will stop here for the time being what we will do is using these measures uh, we will so, if you look at the way we constructed these measures that was by defining uh, this right. So, we had T sub f for all continuous functions and this definition this looking at the inner product gave us a measure right by representation theorem. But if you look at the right hand side because this mu uh, u v these are uh, complex finite uh, Borel measures I can define it for all. Um, bounded functions. So, that is what we will do and so I will get operators T sub f for bounded functions. So, from continuous functions on sigma we are able to go to bounded functions. So, we will enlarge this uh, this class of operators we are looking at and this isometric isomorphism we had from continuous functions to this class of operators T sub f that we will extend to bounded functions and appropriate class of operators on the other side. Okay. So, that is what we will lead uh, will lead to a statement of the uh, spectral theorem. Okay. So, we will stop here.